Climate Now, en collaboration avec Copernicus. Hello and welcome to Climate Now, here from the Aska Research Station in southern Sweden, where scientists are investigating a methane mystery. They're concerned because levels of methane in the atmosphere are rising rapidly and nobody is quite sure why. So we're here to find some answers, but first, the latest data from the Copernicus Climate Change Service. Globally, it was the warmest September on record by a large margin, with temperatures 0.9 degrees above the 1991 to 2020 average. Here in Europe, September was the warmest ever, with a huge temperature anomaly of 2.5 degrees Celsius above average. France, Belgium, Germany, Poland and Austria were among countries that had their hottest Septembers on record. It was hot and in parts of Europe and North Africa it was unusually rainy. This map of precipitation anomaly shows in dark blue the heavy rain associated with Storm Daniel. It led to devastating and deadly floods in Libya, Greece, Turkey and Bulgaria. Meanwhile, in Antarctica, the sea ice extent was 9% below the 1991 to 2020 average for September. This is the fifth month in a row that Antarctic sea ice has been at a record low level for the time of year. Now to our story, and methane concentrations in our atmosphere are rising at the moment, and that's not good news because methane is a powerful greenhouse gas. So what's happening? Well, let's find out more. These scientists are on a mission to track sources of methane, a climate warming gas with no colour or smell. It's emitted by a huge variety of man-made and natural sources. And Thea Pisander wants to know how much is coming from this Baltic seascape. This kind of environment is seldom monitored, but it probably should be. So now we have put a chamber on top of the water surface that's going to measure methane, carbon dioxide and water vapour. Generally, the methane is coming from the seafloor, but what kind of habitats is emitting what kind of amount, that is the tricky part. Working out how much methane is coming from lush coastal areas like this is a small but important step in answering the big question. Why are methane levels rising so sharply? Is it a natural source or is it a human and industrial source? I think this is one of the big problems that we try to solve right now. What is responsible for these changes in increase in methane with time. This graph shows how methane levels have risen in the past 20 years. The gas comes from three different sources. One third is from industry, like oil and gas. One third is from agriculture, including livestock. And one third comes from nature. Which one is responsible for the recent rise in methane? Geochemist Volker Bruchert says we need a lot more information on what's happening in nature. We know that agricultural emitters, sewage treatment plants, that those are stronger emitters than some of these coastal systems are. However, we have a lot of coastline on Earth that uh, has really not been taken into account sufficiently. The other areas which are poorly monitored are lakes, rivers, wetlands, farmland and forests. Nature is complex, as expert David Basbeken explains. OK, so this area is dry. Air goes into the surface soil, which means that methane-eating bacteria sits there. This will be a methane sink. In this area, which is boggy, it's water-saturated, we have anaerobic conditions in the soils. Methane-producing microorganisms will produce methane. This is a methane source. Mm -hmm. The forest behind us looks dry, so that will probably be a methane sink now. A wet forest can also be a methane source. But in this case, I think it's a sink. Landscapes change, and there is a suspicion that as our planet warms, then methane-producing bacteria are becoming more active. And that would just accelerate warming because methane is a potent greenhouse gas. So what should we do? The best we can do is to prevent human-caused emissions, because that will have a double effect. It will partly decrease the human emissions, but it will also decrease the future natural emissions. Well, that's all we have time for, but you can read more about how our planet is changing and why on euronews.com slash climate now. And I'll see you next time. Climate now, en collaboration avec Copernicus.